Hi folks, the quicksort algorithm is the staple of pretty much every intro to algorithms course and today I want to take a look at the paper where Sir Tony Hoare originally proposed this algorithm. This was actually first published as one among a collection of algorithms in the communications of the ACM back in July 1961. The central idea behind quicksort is to break up the array that you're sorting into two partitions and then sort each of the partitions recursively. As we'll see, most of the work is actually done in the partition phase. Tony Hoare published this as two separate algorithms, the partition algorithm and the sort algorithm. Let's first look at the partition algorithm. A is the array that we want to sort and the part that we want to sort is the one between indices M and N. In this particular partition procedure, we also want to output I and J. And at the end of the partition procedure, we want this to hold. Now, what does this mean? So if A is your entire array, we want to sort part that's between M and N. And at the end of this entire partition procedure, we want J to be greater than or equal to M. We want I to be greater than J and I to be less than or equal to N. At the very beginning, we picked X to be a random element within this array. And we want the partitioning to work such that all the elements between M and J are less than or equal to X. The ones between J and I are equal to X and the ones between I and N are greater than or equal to X. So you see what this partition process is doing is picking a dividing line somewhere in the array and moving all the elements that are less than the element at that dividing line to one side and all the elements that are greater than it to the other side. As you look at this code, you'll notice that there's a lot of go-to statements in here. And I want to point out that this was before we realized that go-to was a bad idea before Dijkstra published his famous go-to considered harmful paper. This was also before Hoar published his ideas on an axiomatic basis for verifying computer programs in which he also talks about how having go-tos makes it hard to prove programs correct. But let's take this as it is for now. We start by picking a random integer between the two indices m and n and then x is the array element at that random position. At the beginning i points to the lowest index and j points to the highest index. We start from the bottom of the array. We start with i and we keep incrementing i until we find an element that is greater than the random element we chose at the beginning. And if that happens, we then go start with the top of the array and we increment downwards. And again, we keep doing this until we find an element that is less than the random element we picked at the beginning. Now, at this point, I points to an element which is on the left side of the array, but is greater than the, the random element we picked. J has found an element on the right side of the array that is less than the random element. Then we go jump to this change part and we exchange these two elements that are out of place that I and J are pointing to. Note that this is an in-place exchange. We simply exchange these two elements within the array itself. And then I keeps moving upwards, J keeps moving downwards, and we start the process all over again by jumping back to up. Now, there are a few interesting corner cases here which might lead to infinite loops which we have to deal with. And they have to do with how you pick this random element at the beginning. The first case is that you randomly happen to pick the least element in your array. The second case is that you randomly happen to pick the greatest element. And the third case is that all the elements in the array are equal. And to deal with those corner cases, we have to do a couple of extra comparisons so that I and J 
do not end up outside the bounds of the array. And now that we've defined our partition procedure, we can get to how to actually sort. So this is the quick sort procedure. We're trying to sort the array A between the bounds M and N. Now remember that at the end of the partition process, the part of the array between M and J only had elements less than the randomly selected element and the part between i and n only had elements greater than it, which means all we have to do to sort the array now is to first partition the array. The partition process tells us the location of the dividing line in terms of the indices i and j, and then we simply recursively sort the part of the array between m and j and the part of the array between i and n. Poor followed up that paper where he first published the quick sort code with a longer paper in January of 1962 where he presented some more analysis and explanation of the algorithm. Let's go over Hoare's analysis of how much time this quick sort algorithm takes. Let's start by looking at the partition process. How many comparisons does it take to partition an array of n items? Now you'll note from the code that we saw earlier that the partition process moves i from the bottom, j from the top, and it will pretty much compare the whole array as i and j move closer to each other. So the number of comparisons is very close to n. Now the next question to ask is, how many exchanges does this algorithm perform? How many times do we have to swap two elements in the array? And this is going to be a probabilistic calculation depending on some sort of distribution of the elements within the array. I encourage you to read the paper for the full proof, but the expected number of exchanges is this expression in N. Now, given this is the expected number of exchanges and the number of comparisons was very close to N, in terms of the total time taken by the algorithm, it will be of the form of this expression, where A, B, and C are some constants depending on the physical computer that we run this on. And then to compute the total time taken by the algorithm, we can express it as this recurrence relation, where R was the pivot along which the partition happened, so the time taken by the entire algorithm for n elements is the time taken by each of the partitions, which handled r and n minus r elements, plus the time taken by the partitioning. Again, I encourage you to read the paper for the full proof, but making the assumption that n is large and then approximating away some terms, the final running time of the algorithm comes out to be 2n log of n. Note that this log is the natural log. Now the absolute minimum number of comparisons required to sort an array is n log n, where the log is to the base two. So this means that quick sort is within a factor of 1.4 of the theoretical minimum. The author performs some benchmarks comparing quick sort against merge sort. Merge sort was the fastest known algorithm for sorting at the time. And as you can see, quick sort is always faster than merge sort. So that was a quick look at quick sort as it was originally published by Hoare back in 1961 and 62. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.